Projectors don't have to be confined to a home theater. You could project a screen here, or how about here, or maybe even here. Today on The Hookup, I've got eight of Amazon's best-selling portable projectors from companies like Kodak, BenQ, and Anchor, and I'm gonna run them through a bunch of tests to figure out which one is best and if any of them are worth buying. While you could use these projectors in a home theater setup, their main purpose is to be able to project a screen wherever you want, whenever you want, with almost no setup time. In this video, I'm gonna test out things like brightness, battery life, focus uniformity, fan noise, latency, speaker fidelity, app compatibility, and of course, picture quality. And then based on all that data, I'll let you know which projectors I think are worth buying. But if you wanna check out all that data yourself, there's a link to the Google Sheet down in the description. Thank you so much to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, about a mile away from the very first Micro Center. And as a kid, walking around inside it was more exciting than going to a candy store. Today, it's more of the same. Micro Center is one of the only stores that you can walk in and find shelves full of 3D printers, security cameras, maker-specific tools, and even portable projectors like the ones in this video. If you're lucky enough to live near a Micro Center and you've never been, you should definitely go in and check out their amazing selection and passion employees. There's even a link down in the description to get a coupon for a free 240 gigabyte SSD. For everyone else, microcenter.com has just as many great products at competitive prices, so you'll be sure to find something for yourself or the techie in your life. Let's do a quick introduction of each of the projectors in this video because they vary quite a bit in size and form factor. Going from the least expensive to the most, we've got the $179 EasyCast Beam J2, then the $299 Kodak Luma 350, the $339 ViewSonic M1 Plus, and wrapping it up for this flat form factor is the $488 AXA M7. After that, we've got the larger portable projectors starting with the $499 BenQ GB30, then the $503 WiMAX Dice, the $549 Anchor Mars 2 Pro, and the most expensive projector in this video is the $680 XGME Halo. Let's get started by comparing their battery life and brightness. The standard measurement for projector brightness is the ANSI lumen, and it's calculated by projecting a pure white screen and then dividing it into nine sections. You take an individual brightness measurement at each section using a lux meter and then calculate the average reading. After calculating that average, you multiply that by the screen size in square meters, and that gives you the ANSI lumens. I measured each projector's ANSI lumens in both their high brightness and battery saving modes, and I found that the XGME Halo and the Anchor Mars 2 Pro in high brightness mode were the brightest at 518 and 516 ANSI lumens respectively. And in battery saving mode, the Anchor Mars 2 blew the rest of the projectors out of the water. However, just having a higher brightness battery saving mode doesn't mean anything if it doesn't actually save you batteries. So I ran full battery drain tests in each brightness mode, and I also calculated something that I called efficiency by multiplying the ANSI lumens by the number of minutes that the projector was able to play a movie at that brightness. Of all the tests that I did for this video, this one had the most definitive result with the Anchor Mars 2 Pro absolutely destroying the rest of the projectors with 66,000 lumen minutes on high brightness mode and a huge 81,000 lumen minutes of efficiency on battery saving mode, which translated to four hours and 24 minutes at over 300 ANSI lumens. I used the extended director's cut of Return of the King because I figured none of these projectors would be up to the task for finishing that absurdly long movie, but the Anchor Mars 2 Pro managed to make it all the way through the credits and I had to rewind it to finish the test. The XGME Halo also did well in battery saving mode lasting three hours and 41 minutes, but at only 103 ANSI lumens, giving it a lumen minute score of just 23,000 compared to the Anchor's 81,000. On high brightness mode, the Anchor was just as impressive, lasting 128 minutes at 516 lumens, while the XGME put out 518 lumens, but only for 56 minutes before automatically switching to low power mode for an additional 30 minutes and then powering itself off. And before we move on for brightness, I should also mention that the AXA has something called boost mode that's only available when plugged in, but it put out a very respectable 648 ANSI lumens, which was definitely the highest in this video and looked great, even though it sounds a bit like a jet engine in the process. The brightness uniformity on all these projectors was also exceptional. In my last video, the best performer had a brightness deviation of 46%. But in this lineup, the Anchor Mars 2 Pro took the top spot with less than 8% deviation on battery saving mode. As I said, all the projectors in this video did significantly better than normal LED projectors, and that's probably due to the fact that they aren't using a large Fresnel lens to focus their light source. 
So after brightness and battery testing, the Anker Mars 2 Pro seems like the obvious choice, but we've got lots more things to consider, and the next one is clarity and focus uniformity. Image clarity is basically the result of the native resolution of the projector and the quality of the focusing lens. The Kodak, EasyCast, and ViewSonic projectors are all 480p native resolution, and as a result, when you project a large screen, you can not only see the individual pixels, but also a slight screen door effect, which is when the space in between the pixels makes it look like you're looking through a screen door. The BenQ and Anchor have a 720p native resolution, which means that the individual pixels are less visible, but still noticeable if you're looking for them. I didn't see any screen door effect with the 720p projectors, and from a normal viewing distance, they looked perfectly acceptable, if not just a little bit soft on focus. The AXA, WiMAX, and XGMI are all 1080p native projectors, which gave them a totally crisp and clear image even when projecting a 100-inch screen. The AXA did do slightly worse in my clarity test due to its motorized focus system, which didn't have a small enough increment adjustment to let me get it perfectly dialed in. The next thing that I measured was the focus uniformity, where I project text into the center and each of the four corners, and then score the focus of each zone from 1 to 10, 1 being completely out of focus and 10 being the same clarity as the center text. In this test, the XGMI Halo performed extremely well with an average score of 9.75, followed by the other two 1080p projectors, the AXA and the WiMAX. After that, it was the Anker Mars 2 Pro and the BenQ GB30, which are the 720p projectors. So now that we've tested all the individual parts, theoretically, the overall viewing experience should just be some combination of brightness, clarity, and focus uniformity. But in practice, I found that color accuracy and contrast ratio also make a huge difference. So in order to score their overall viewing experience, I projected a 100 inch screen onto my Vivid Storm ambient light rejecting projector screen and filmed each projector with my Sony a6600 on manual mode so that the relative brightness of each projector would still be visible. On most of the recorded footage, you're gonna see some faint banding on the video, which is caused by the refresh rate of the projector not being completely in sync with the camera. I did do my best to find a common shutter speed that would reduce this banding, but specifically the Anker Mars 2 Pro didn't match up well with the 1 over 80 shutter speed and has more banding than the other projectors. But you should know that none of the banding is visible in person. With that out of the way, what you're about to see is a single elimination head-to-head -head showdown of each projector going from least expensive to most expensive using a Dolby reference video that you can see down at the bottom. The first matchup was the EasyCast Beam versus the Kodak Luma 350, and neither of them were what I would call good, but I don't necessarily think that these projectors are supposed to be used for a 100-inch screen. As I said, the video looks a little worse than it did in person, but I will say that I thought the Kodak was slightly less bad, so it did move on to round two. And that meant that the Kodak Luma was up against the ViewSonic M1 Plus. And again, neither of them were great on a screen this size, and the individual pixels were clearly visible. But the Kodak did manage a second win by having better contrast and color accuracy. So then it was the 480p 187 lumen Kodak Luma versus the 1080p 505 lumen AXA M7. And the matchup went pretty much exactly as you'd expect. The bright colors and crisp image on the AXA M7 were more than enough to win this round against the Kodak, despite some inaccuracies in color and lower than average contrast. After that, the AXA went up against the 720p BenQ GB30, which I figured didn't stand a chance with its slightly lower resolution and significantly lower brightness. But the GB30's contrast ratio was the hero of the day, and even though the overall image wasn't as bright as the AXA, the color accuracy, saturation, and contrast on the GB30 just couldn't be ignored, and it easily won this round. After that, the BenQ GB30 took on another 1080p projector, the WiMAX Dice, and again, the BenQ's color accuracy and contrast were more than enough to make up for the lower brightness and lower native resolution. Certain scenes like the lava in the volcano looked pretty cool on the WiMAX with its super over-exaggerated colors and brightness, while other scenes like the Golden Gate Bridge flyover looked extremely oversaturated with inaccurate colors and a lot of detail lost in the darker areas. For this round, when I was watching the projectors side by side, there was no question in my mind that the BenQ GB30 was the winner. So next, both 720p projectors went head to head, the BenQ GB30 against the Anker Mars 2 Pro, which seemed like the best projector from a brightness and battery life standpoint. Unfortunately, the Anker just couldn't even come close to the BenQ, and the Anker Mars 2 Pro's lack of contrast really distracted from the overall picture quality. In addition to that, the colors on the Anker were also a little bit too blue, and it had much worse black levels than the BenQ, giving the BenQ GB30 a third easy win. 
So in the last round, the 720p 187 lumen BenQ GV30 went up against the most expensive projector in this video, the $680 XGME Halo with its 1080p native resolution and 518 lumens. And it was the closest matchup yet. The XGME had a similar great contrast ratio to the BenQ while also having really high brightness and good black levels. The only mark against the XGME was the super oversaturated colors that you would typically get when you put a TV on the vivid image mode setting, but it was still hard to argue with the XGME's performance, and I did give it the slight edge over the BenQ GV30 in overall viewing experience, putting it in first place. After some additional constellation rounds to figure out the lower ranks, this was the overall ranking for viewing experience on a 100 inch projection screen in a reasonably dark room. But wait, there's still more. Because these projectors are supposed to be portable, they also need to provide a good enough speaker quality to not only enjoy the movie, but also be loud enough to be heard outside when there's ambient noise. After listening to the same clip hundreds of times on each projector, I ended up with these rankings and found that this small clip recorded on my Rode shotgun microphone did a really good job illustrating the different volume and sound qualities of each projector, which I ranked from eight, which was the worst, to one, which was the best. I'm gonna play them all one time first, and then I'll give you my opinion. This is Dolby Cinema. 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 You can hear that the loudest projector was the WiMAX Dice, while the BenQ GV30 was not quite as loud, but avoided the distortion that you can clearly hear on the WiMAX, which is why I put the BenQ GV30 into first place. You can also hear the ambient noise of each projector, which was by far the loudest on the AXA M7 and basically non-existent on the XGME. The Kodak fans weren't loud, but it did have a high-pitched whine that I found extremely annoying. Let's play those clips one more time. This is Dolby Cinema. 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 All right, so that's got to be it, right? Not yet. Most of these projectors are also smart projectors with built-in apps, which is nice since they're supposed to be an all-in-one unit that you can just set down and turn on. I read a bunch of reviews for these projectors and some people said that Hulu worked, but Netflix didn't, or that Disney Plus was laggy while YouTube TV played fine. So I just said, screw it. And I subscribed to every major streaming service and tested them out on each of the projectors. Here's one big chart with how they did. You're gonna notice some of the boxes have footnotes for things that I had to do to make them work properly. And if you're curious what those specific things are, you can either leave a comment or you can just go read them yourself on the Google Sheet from the link down in the description. The easiest way to avoid these incompatibilities is to just use an external streaming stick like the Google Chromecast, since all these projectors have an HDMI input and the ViewSonic and BenQ also have USB-C display capabilities. However, if you wanna hook up your video game console to these external inputs, you should definitely take note of their input lag, which I measured against my LG C9 TV in gaming mode. Using an HDMI splitter, I ran a synchronized 60 FPS video into each projector and I recorded them with a GoPro at 120 frames per second. You can see that when I freeze the frame, all the projectors are at least one frame behind the TV's image. So we can calculate their input lag by multiplying how many frames different they were from the TV. Then we add 13.5 milliseconds of lag to that to account for the LG C9's lag, and we get these values. Generally speaking, input lag under 50 milliseconds is gonna be indistinguishable for casual gaming, and anything from 50 to 100 milliseconds is gonna to start to feel a little bit strange. Anything over 100 milliseconds becomes a problem for things like jumping and aiming and can lead to a pretty bad video gaming experience. So after all that, now is the big question. Are any of these worth buying? Yes, but in my opinion, probably not the ones that you think. My first recommendation is the Anchor Mars 2 Pro for people who wanna take a projector camping or to a tailgate or maybe just into your backyard to project a moderately sized screen onto a wall, the side of a tent, or even the side of a car. The Mars 2 Pro has great battery life, great brightness, nice loud sound, 
and decent app compatibility, except for YouTube TV, which sucks if you wanna watch sports. Its only other faults were color accuracy and contrast ratio, which probably aren't your biggest concerns when you're projecting onto random surfaces outdoors. At $549, the value of the Anchor Mars 2 Pro is a little bit questionable, but it's recently been on sale for as little as $369, which is an absolute steal for a projector with these kinds of features. My second recommendation is the projector that finished dead last in almost every category, the EasyCast Beam J2. This projector is the perfect tool for an artist who wants to project onto a wall to paint murals. It's pocket size, wire-free, lightweight, has a massive six hour battery life on low brightness. It's got a quarter 20 tripod mount on the bottom. And most importantly, it's got four point keystoning. You just put your art onto a USB drive, plug it into the back of the EasyCast, set the keystone and you're good to go. I really can't recommend the EasyCast for watching movies, but as an art projector, it is easily worth the $179 price tag. And now we need to talk about the top performers in this video and why those aren't the ones that I'm recommending. The XGME Halo has great brightness, the best picture quality, an almost perfect app compatibility, and good sound with no fan noise. Honestly, it's a super impressive package for a portable projector. However, if you're using it on high brightness, you're gonna get less than an hour of battery life, which isn't enough to watch a movie, and it's definitely not enough for a football game. Which means in most cases, you're usually gonna need to plug it in. And if you're gonna do that, do you really need a portable projector? In addition to better sound and more compact form factor, some of the lesser known advantages of a portable projector are internal components that are more resistant to being rattled around, less heat generation, and maybe the biggest difference is the ability to project and focus an extremely small screen. Most traditional projectors can project a screen as small as 35 inches, but these portable projectors can go as small as five inches. And I'm not sure why you'd wanna do that, but it's nice to know that you can. If these differences aren't important to you and you just want a good projector, then for the $680 price tag of the XGME Halo, you are pretty close to being able to afford a decently high-end traditional ball projector like the BenQ TH671ST, which paired with the Chromecast gives you full app compatibility and over five times the brightness, making it much better for bright environments. And all the same things are true for the BenQ GB30, which automatically switched from high brightness to battery saving mode after 46 minutes but it had great app compatibility, the best color accuracy and contrast, and great sound. The BenQ GB30 also has my favorite mounting solution with a magnetic base that lets you roll the projector to easily adjust the angle of projection. So you can put your projector on a wall, table, or ceiling, and it's gonna automatically adjust the vertical keystone for you. But again, unless portability is a major sticking point for you, $499 seems like an awful lot to pay for 187 ANSI lumens and 720p resolution. If you're on a budget, some of the non-battery based 1080p LED projectors from my last video were in the 450 ANSI lumen range for around $150. As I said, with those projectors, you're gonna miss out on the small form factor, good speakers, and the ability to project smaller screens, but the value is pretty hard to argue with. So what do you think? Am I being too hard on these portable projectors? Am I missing some big use case here? If so, make sure you let me know down in the comments. I've got links to all the projectors that I tested in this video down in the description. And if you decide to buy one, I'd appreciate it if you could use those links since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small portion of the sale at no cost to you. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, Thanks for watching The Hookup.